All right, Lord, we thank you for your voice. Father, we thank you for the voice of God and for your heart, Lord. And Lord, we want to become more accurate in hearing you. We want a, a greater clarity in our spirit. And Father, we want to know your heart in a deeper way so that when we speak, abundant grace and love comes forth in all of our words because we know your heart and we hear your voice. And so, Lord, we ask that those that have ears to hear would hear what your spirit is saying to the prophets this morning and that they would grab a hold for their lives what you have for them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, so I, I am excited to share with you, and I do this once a year in the beginning of January sometime. It takes a while for all of the prophets to get their words. They're usually getting them in December and the first couple weeks of January, and, uh, but it's exciting to hear the different ones. And I want to just share a few thoughts about the prophetic realm, uh, because prophetic words are basically prophetic possibilities. And when they're spoken, they can either just fall to the ground, even over your own life, over a nation, over a church, over a city, or it can be received by people of faith who want to say, yes, God, that's for me. I'm bringing it down. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work with you, Holy Spirit, to see this thing come about in my life. Because if the Lord says something, that's just not going to happen without your cooperation. We have to cooperate with the words that are over us. And our heart needs to have the faith that pleases God to grab a hold and make it our own. So we choose those prophetic words just as they're delivered over us. We make the choice, just like we make the choice to get salvation. He gives it to all, but we get, we get to receive it. So we have to receive that. Um, now today, I have chosen, you know, there's thousands of prophets in our nation, around the world. I have chosen, based on the words that I've looked at, things that resonate with my soul for this time in our church, for this time of history. So those are the words that are resonate with, with me, and those are the ones that I'm going to be sharing. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14.32 says, the spirit of prophets are subject to the prophet. So why do I share that? Because the personality of the prophet is going to come through. The heart of that prophet is going to come through. Uh, just even this week, Dana and Sage's ministry, very different from ours, same heart cry. But the personality of the prophet comes through the words that are given, and the prophet is in control of how that word is delivered. Okay? That's important to know. Um, most of prophetic words that are given to a prophet come because there's a, there's a people or a place or a person that God wants to de deliver a message to. So when, when people are prophetic people um, and they've been released in the prophetic gift, it's because God has put them in a place of influence to influence them with that prophetic word. And what I have learned over time is the thing that you love the most is the thing that you have the most authority to speak into. The thing that you love the most, God will give you the authority to speak into that realm. And so, you know, there are prophets that only speak over churches. There are some prophets that only speak over individuals. There's prophets that speak over nations, cities. Some prophets only speak over children. So sometimes prophets have a specific niche that they're in. I personally, I learned how to prophesy over the church first. That was my first thing, and I think it's because I love the church. I love the church. I love the body of Christ and the bride of Christ. That's in the heart of the Father. Um, 1 Corinthians 13, 9, we know in part and we prophesy in part. So the best of prophets only have a finite bit that they're getting from the Lord, obviously. I mean, if we were to uh, you know, try to envision the mind of God, we can't envision it big enough, right? It would encompass worlds because of his infinite knowledge versus, oh, this little itty bitty thing up here, right? This little itty bitty thing is trying to grab a hold of a few thoughts from the big guy. And so we prophesy in part, God gives a little bit of that he can. And 
because we are infinite, he's limited to what we got here. So all my experiences, all my knowledge, my training, my education, everything that I know, he has to use that small little infinite knowledge in small little brain to communicate his big message. And so he could have the same message and give it to me and Gwen over there, and it's going to come out differently because he has to use what's in here, our finite ability to grab a hold. So he'll give us thoughts that we've known. He'll give us scenarios, pictures, visions, different things, experiences. He's confined to what I've got right here to communicate that message. So it's in part. And so you have to keep that in mind with the prophetic. Also, 2 Corinthians 20, 20 says, Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe in his prophets, and you shall prosper. Okay, so people that, oh, they don't want the gifts, oh well. You might not prosper. Up to you, this is Bible. Right? So if you want to prosper, then receive the, you know, the prophetic gifting. Receive what prophets are saying. Because it's the word of the Lord. Now, that doesn't mean you just believe everything hook, line, and sinker. That's why you hear God for yourself. Because sometimes words are like, uh-oh, I think I just have to flush that one. That person wasn't operating in the right heart. Okay? So if you are a discerning person and you've learned how to hear the word of the Lord, no, no problem. Because you are the, um, the sifter of the words. Okay? You judge your prophetic words. All right, Amos 3, 7. Certainly the Lord God does nothing, nothing, unless he reveals his secret plan to his servants, the prophets. So the Lord is not going to be doing stuff unless he told the prophets first. And that's a real great secure place to be. Nothing's going to take anybody by surprise because the Lord is faithful to speak to the prophets on the earth the direction of where he wants his people to go. And he's faithful to do that. And so we don't have to worry. Um, he's not going to, he, he says, certainly the Lord does nothing unless he reveals his secret plan to the prophets. Oh, we must not have gotten our PowerPoint up. Oh, sorry, gang. It's on my laptop. Yeah, darn. Okay. M a minor thing. I thought you guys were looking at all the scriptures this whole time. All right, no worries. We'll, we'll kind of try to get that up. So there is an apostolic council of, the prof of prophetic elders in the United States of America. I don't know if you guys knew that. And they, they have had this group for 23 years. Okay. However, many of these prophets have been speaking um, in their prophetic gifting for way over 30 years, okay? It's just that 23 years ago, they got together as friends and said, hey, you know, why don't we put together some counsel so we can judge each other's words and get more accuracy? And so they did, and um, some big names that are in that circle is Cindy Jacobs, Chuck Pierce, Jim Gall. These are very uh, trusted words that are part of this, um, and many, many others, okay? many others and what they do is you know they have uh conferences get togethers where they're seeking the lord and then they bring to this round table all the prophetic words from from all of them you know and there might be hundreds of them and they will only publish the words that every single prophet is in agreement with in other words this one heard it this one heard it. This one heard it. There's a, a consensus that this is the word of the Lord because it has been heard many, many times from different prophetic people. And so this morning, I have chosen these eight prophetic words from this group of people. Now, at different times, I've done several different things where I've chosen different words from different prophets. And I always, uh, as, as much as I love the well-established prophets, I'm always interested in the new and up-and-coming prophets as well, the young, uh, newer generation and what they're speaking. S but this morning, the, these eight is what I'm going to be sharing with you. So the first one is uh, God will help us establish ourselves as a Goshen, ourselves. So um, 
Goshen was this choice land that the children of Israel ended up getting, uh, and it was it was during the time where there were many lean years, and so in Goshen, you know, there's all this war and there's all this famine and all this other stuff going around, and these guys have the choicest land. They they got milk and honey and water and pastures and they're living it up and all this other stuff is going on and so when I heard this word a choice land will be provided for God's people during the lean years what I loved about this word it, is it said God will help us establish ourselves as a Goshen so you if you drink of the Lord if you have received from the Lord you will become a Goshen to dispense water green pastures the love of the father you know you will be a dispenser because you have had visitations with jesus so we are going to become a goshen all right and it's really going to be dependent on how much you receive from the lord so we need to be greedy receivers from the lord the second one is do not let the enemy feed your fears but trust god in your well-being now, we heard that even the prophetic this morning. And, you know, quite honestly, the last couple of years, our church has been a Goshen. There's been all this fear and craziness out there with the pandemic, and that thing just like somehow just went right over our church. You know, we did not walk in fear. We did not walk, um, you know, in what the world was walking in at all. And so this is a continuation um uh, do not let the enemy feed your fears, but trust God in your well-being. That is linked also to the preparation of a practical Goshen. So wisdom says, prepare for the worst, believe God for the best. Okay? Wisdom says, plant a garden. Wisdom says, get out of debt. Uh, prepare. Okay? Prepare. Have a food supply. So do some preparation because we might be coming up to some pretty lean years. And so you want to have a good stock in your medicine cabinet, in your, um, what's it called, your, in, in your kitchen, in your pantry. Yes, you want to have food stored, okay? So if you've not heard that in the spirit, I'm here to tell you this is what the spirit of the Lord is saying. You've got to catch it this morning because time is of the essence. And, and of course, you need you need a certain amount of competence and a certain amount of skill in some of these things to prepare. Get that. Get that now. Learn about things. Learn about rabbits and chickens and gardens and whatever else that you need to learn. This is your opportunity. Okay? So that's, you, you're going to fear a lot less if you're prepared. Okay? Uh, number three, around the table. So around the table there's going to be people together coming together, communities of people coming together. And there's going to be restoration of families, restoration of prodigals, kind of like the book of Acts, sharing of a community of people, sharing their goods, um, having communion with one another. This, is gonna, this kind of naturally happens in hard times. People kind of pull together. So this is, this is one of the things that is, is going to happen, a kind of a restoration of hospitality, people opening up their homes, doing church in homes. Uh, number four, covenantal friendships. Covenantal friendships. Okay, You make a covenant together. In our church, we have people covenant to become members. It's not just, oh, membership. No, there's a covenantal thing that we, we ask because it, they're co it's a covenantal friendship where we sit around the table and we dream the dreams of God. Uh, companies are going to find lasting f relationships, and in these companies, it's gonna, we're going to have nets for harvest. Okay, We're going to come into this group. There's going to be a harvest of souls of the disconnected. I think about our Tuesday night Patriot meeting. You know, We had all these people out there all disconnected thinking are we the only ones out there that don't want to wear a mask you know that don't agree with what's happening and they all came here on tuesday nights and we have got to know this great group of people um and so there's going to be groups of people coming together covenanting together for the future number five psalm 23 the good shepherd is revealed 
Psalm 23. This is the year 2023. Often in the Hebrew calendar, the 5783 is their Hebrew calendar this year. Okay, so the 83rd Psalm, the Jews look at that very intensely because it lines up with 5783, which is 5,783 years since um, Adam and Eve were created. Okay, that's the Jewish number for this year. But Psalm 23 is 2023, and many prophets heard this. So I'm actually going to be going over this, um, Psalm 23, a little bit more in detail. And I just encourage you to read it in different translations. So you can ex extract the full life out of Psalm 23 for this year. Uh, number six, a bounty in the hands of God's children for personal safety and security. Poverty will be eradicated. There will be breakthrough in businesses. So this is the abundance. This is the prosperity. This is the bounty. That in Goshen, we're not affected by everything that's going on. There's still a bounty happening in Goshen. There is prosperity in Goshen. Despite the difficult times around us, there's still this place of great prosperity uh, in Goshen. Number seven, Isaiah 66, gross darkness will cover the earth, but the glory of God will shine out in the midst. Uh, Jim Gall had a word about a teeter-totter. You know, it's like, up goes the darkness, up comes the glory, up comes the darkness, up comes the glory. And so we need to realize that um, we are that light. We are the light that's to shine in the in the deep darkness, like stars just beaming forth lights in the darkness. And the last one, and they've actually had this word for several years regarding World War III and just the conflict, the time of great conflict coming. And again, uh, when they shared about this, you know, they said it can still be stopped if we pray into this. And so it came with um, us speaking life and continuing to let intercession go to the throne of God in our prayer time for our nation and our world. Um, some other things that I just grabbed, um, Chuck Pierce had a word about God opening up new supply lines. So we know the supply lines are being affected. There's so, there's, you know, have you noticed in the stores, there's a lot less on the shelves? So the supply lines are being affected right now. His word was that God would give us new supply lines and that the ones that we have will be multiplied or he would give us new sources to multiply. So think about that word. What do you have that God wants to multiply? Or is there a new source that he wants to multiply so that you are prepared and ready with supply lines when they stopped coming? All right, so think about that word. Um, Kent Christmas, kind of in line with miracle signs and wonders. Um, you know, they didn't have enough food to feed the 5,000. So, all right, well, let's just get that, mood that food multiplied. Those are the kind of miracles we're going to see in this next season. Uh, Alexander Pagan, I don't know this man very well, but I, I resonated with his word that we are coming into a time with the rise of the reformers. And um, in March, we will be hosting Robert Liarden, who is the author of God's Generals. God's Generals were all reformers. And God is bringing him here, uh, partnering with Pastor Ben Lim, and he's going to be speaking at a conference about becoming a reformer. So this comes right into alignment with what God is doing. We've heard lots of uh, words about the transfer of wealth and wealth creation comes with the ability to influence the world and that there's going to be division, right? That the lines in the sand just keep getting, like you can't walk on that fence very good anymore. You got to pick what side you're going to be on. So those dividing lines. Um, Hank Kuhneman, divine turnarounds are, are happening going to be happening in the spirit. Joshua Mills, Revelation 5, the incense of the saints of prayer. So in Revelations, it talks about a bowl where the prayers of the saints go up to the Lord and they fill this bowl. Every prayer fills a bowl. And when that bowl is full, it just tips over and spills to the earth. And all those prayers hit the earth and the answer comes. 
but it comes with those praying and filling up those bowls. And so this place of um, revival, the prayers of revival that's gone up, there's going to be a tipping point of that bowl hitting the earth. And uh, Kat Kerr kind of came into that. She said there will be bowls full of prayer and that the gates of hell are trembling. The gates of hell are trembling and they will not prevail against the church. They won't prevail. Many um, prophetic voices have talked about justice is coming. Justice is coming in great measure and this will be a year of consequence and judgment. Okay, so we don't, if you don't want that judgment, you got to be on the right side of things, right? You got to be on the right side of things. So very, very circumspect, very circumspect. So those are some of the words um, that I wanted to share with you. And then I want to go into Psalm 23 because I feel like Psalm 23, I heard it for several other prophets, but it witnessed with my spirit because in Psalm 23 is literally everything that I believe we're going to need for this upcoming season and, and year. So um, we, we behold, whatever we behold, we're going to look like. Whatever we gaze upon, um, that's who we're going to become. And so this year will be the beholding of the shepherd, the shepherd, which is what Psalm 23 is about. And based on your encounter with the shepherd, the great shepherd, when you come into that place of care and love and nurturing, you put yourself under that place of the shepherd as a sheep. You put yourself there. You say, yes, God, I'm going to come under the shepherd. All right? I'm going to come under the shepherd anointing. When you put yourself there, then he's going to reveal himself to you as the great shepherd. You're going to experience the love of the shepherd. You're going to experience the care the nurturing, and also the discipline of the shepherd. And when you do, that encounter is going to put a shepherd's heart within you so that you can now be a shepherd to somebody else. I believe this year is going to be great preparation for those that come under the shepherd's anointing to receive a shepherd in your life, i.e. a pastor, a mentor, you receive that anointing from a shepherd, God will make you a shepherd so that when harvest hits, you are well equipped to be a shepherd that cares and loves the sheep. Do you know caring and loving sheep is not easy? Oh, sheep are so messy. Messy, messy, messy. Oh my gosh, if I had to count the number of times I had to flag an issue this week. Messy, messy, messy. However, that patience, that love, that care, that nurture, it gets deep in our soul so that you can love and care for other people. God's going to do that if you come under beholding the shepherd this year. We're going to gain that intimate knowledge of the Lord as, as our shepherd. John 10 says, my sheep hear my voice. So you're going to be able to hear the voice of the shepherd better this year. All right? Um, Jesus will be revealed as the shepherd, and as such, he's going to be imparting revelation. Everybody say revelation for us to be conformed to his heart. Okay, the shepherd's heart, we need to be conformed to that. That's not something that just comes. It might come to a few people more than others, but having a shepherd's heart is learned, is learned. It's not, it's not just certain personalities or certain people. No, you learn how to love. You learn, how, you don't come out of the womb knowing how to love. I'm so sorry. Come visit my school for a week. It just does not happen naturally. You learn how to love, okay? So when we come under a shepherd, we learn how to love other people. And the Lord is inviting us to this place of encounter with him. Okay, he's inviting us to this place. And then we'll be able to serve others. We'll be able to be a surgeon to help the sheep live. And we're going to be able to experience that. Different levels of freedom and breakthrough are going to come as you allow the shepherd to minister to you in areas that you need freedom and breakthrough. You're going to be the shepherd that then has that to give away when the revival hits and comes. Okay? Um, some people find it easier than others to care for other people, no question. 
However, no one is being excused from learning from the shepherd to be like Jesus. No one is excused. He is going to be revealing to us who the shepherd is this year. And no one is going to be excused from that revelation knowledge. All right? So you got to grab a hold of it. Um, in the ancient Middle East, uh, shepherds were the gate. They were the gateway. And so uh, this little bit of knowledge is really interesting because, you know, we all think of the little gate in the pasture and you open the gate. But back then, they were walls. You know, they had built walls that the sheep stayed in. And the shepherd uh, actually slept in the crack of the wall. So the shepherd was the gate. And so when Jesus says, I am the gate, John 10, uh, 10, 9, I am the gate, he was the gate. Jesus was the gate. It's like, if I let you in, you come in. If I don't let you in, you don't come in. You have to go through Jesus. So in the same way, the shepherd would sleep in the gate, and the sheep could not go in and out of the wall unless the shepherd allowed them to come in and out. Uh, so just a little bit more about Psalm 23. Um, David was 16 or 17 when he wrote the psalm. Okay, And he wrote it. He was a shepherd in his father's house out on the realms of Bethlehem. And he learned how to be a shepherd. And so when, when it says, uh, the Lord is my shepherd, my is really important. You can't, you can't have somebody else's shepherd. You've got to know the shepherd for yourself. He has to become your shepherd. All right? The, the word shepherd comes from ra'ah, which is a Hebrew word. It means best friend. So the shepherd is our best friend. He's not somebody to be feared. He's our best friend. And so that's behold the shepherd this year. Behold who the shepherd is and how he can be your best friend this year. I shall not want. In the Passion Translation, it says, I always have more than enough. When you're in Goshen, you have more than enough. You have more than enough. And there's an awareness. There's an awareness of everything you have. There's this awareness of gratefulness. You're not looking at what you don't have when you're in Goshen. You're looking at all the abundance that you do have. There's so much that we have and that we've been given. And so I shall not want. It's because you have eyes to see the glass is full and not half empty. There's a gratefulness in your heart for what you do have. And because of that, that gratefulness bubbles up inside of you. Okay? I shall not want means Jesus becomes everything to you. You don't have these idols on the side. You're not running to other things. You're running to Jesus with your financial needs, with your healing needs, with your relational conflicts. You're running to Jesus to get those needs met. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Uh, in the Passion Translation, it says he offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love. So picturesque. So we're, we're being invited to this place of green pastures, okay? Um, we're being invited there. Green pastures speak of healing, prosperity. Um, there's no striving, you know? It's a place of rest. And that's what Goshen is. Goshen is a place of rest. Um, the Spirit of God will be inviting many to this place of stillness, to this place of green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. Uh, his tracks take me to an oasis of peace, is what the Passion Version says. An oasis of peace by still waters where we can drink of the Spirit of the Lord. Fresh revelation, fresh pools of water, fresh refreshment. This is what's in Go Goshen, surrounded by the love of God. And, and this is what God is going to provide for us if we want it. It's his invitation that says, come here. Live in my presence. Don't worry about all the guck, 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 guck going on out there. I've got a place right here for you. Okay? Um, he leads me beside still waters. Uh, this is an invitation from heaven to draw near to Abba in vulnerability and honesty. I believe this is a year of freedom for, for greater freedom. Greater freedom, greater deliverance for folks because of the vulnerability um, 
the Father wants to heal all of our wounds. You know, sometimes we think, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm good, I'm good. But, you know, that thing, it's still that scar, just one little flick, and you're like, ouch, darn, it's not totally healed. So these are the, these are the things that the Lord wants to heal. And when we encounter him as our shepherd, we're going to receive healing in those areas. So the love of the shepherd. The word agape, we all know, on, uh, means love. And it comes from the word pao, which is shepherd. So agape is the shepherd's love. And the other part, pao, or ago means shepherd, and pao means rest. So when we come into that place of rest, lay our heart, our mind upon the shepherd's chest. That's where we get that place of love, nurturing, care, healing, revelation. It's all right there next to Abba Father. He restores my soul from the wounded places, the painful losses, the places of fear. He restores my life. He restores my walk with him. Restores my finances, health, relationship, family members. Just the drain of life, the activities of life. When we come into that place with the shepherd, he restores our soul. He fuels us. He fills us. So we have the energy by God's grace to do all that he's called us to do. That's the key. That's the key. Get refilled to be able to do all God asks us to do. All right. May your soul, may you prosper in health even as your soul prospers. That's uh, 3 John 1, 2. So as our soul prospers with our shepherd, we're going to be, we're going to have prosperity. We're going to prosper as our soul prospers. So if your soul, your spirit, your mind, your will, your emotions, all those emotions are not experiencing peace, then that prosperity is not going to come. You have to have your soul prosper to receive prosperity. All right, number four. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. So during worship, the Lord just gave me this just really great picture. Um, oh, I'll save it. It comes up a little bit later. Sorry, I'm ahead of myself. All right, so shadow of death. In order to have a shadow, there has to be a light. The light has to be shining in order to even have a shadow on anything so the light is going to shine there's going to be exposure in the enemy camp that's how justice is going to come because there's massive exposure happening right now um but we're going to shine like stars in the darkness so i will fear no evil that means i'm not going to expect evil i'm not going to doubt or have unbelief okay that's critical i'm going to expect good things that's where my focus is going to be. I'm not expecting evil at all to come nigh my dwelling. So that's important. Um, no expectation at all, but we heard this morning, if you're, not, if you're not expecting evil, then that means you're walking in faith. You've got fearless faith going on. You've got the boldness and the courage going on because that's where you're walking. Okay, Absolutely, completely, diametrically opposite fear and faith so fearless faith so that's the antithesis i'm not going to walk in evil but i'm going to walk in fearless faith i'm going to be courageous we heard that this morning in the prophetic for you are with me the shepherd is walking us your rod and your staff they comfort me that's the authority the strength of god the peace of god that's going to comfort you the discipline of the lord in the rod and the staff is going to keep you on the path that he wants you to walk in Okay, because he disciplines all those he loves. Why? Because he wants us to be better. He wants us to be more fruitful. He wants us to shine greater. He wants us to have more influence than ever before. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Okay, this was where I'm in the middle of worship today, and I see just we're there in the castle with the king, and there we are, king's table full bounty we're having a heyday oh we are partying up party is happening we got the minstrels happening and the jugglers over here and we're all over there feasting having ourselves our wine oh yeah life is good we're laughing we're partying we're feasting and all outside major battle happening 
Soldiers are battling all around the castle, and whoop, God's got it. God's got it. God's got it. We are feasting in the presence of our enemies. We are feasting with the good shepherd. You anoint my head with oil. So what I learned is that this was a practice of shepherds, of real shepherds over sheep. They would get the oil and they would put the oil on the forehead of their sheep. And the reason that they did this was because flies would fly around the sheep and if they didn't have the oil covering them, the flies would land and they would release their larva on the soft tissue of the sheep underneath their skin. And if they did that, that was very itchy. That was very uncomfortable for the sheep. So what the sheep would do to try to get some relief, honestly, they would get all crazed because they would try to bang their heads against posts and gates and other things, rocks, to try to get that thing off of them, but it's, it's embedded under their skin. So when the shepherd anointed them, that oil would cover them, the flies could not land. Now this is, you know, flies are a picture type of demonic activity. Okay, flies can be. And so if you picture this, when you are anointed, you come under the anointing. It says, my, you anoint my head with oil. That oil of the Spirit is the Holy Spirit. Is the Holy Spirit. He wants us all anointed so that he can use us. But he also wants us anointed so that um, we're protected from these demonic distractions because that's what they are. However, if you have enough of that under your skin, you're so crazed as a sheep that you could possibly kill yourself just to try to relieve yourself of um, the, the hurt and the pain and the discomfort that you're in. So we have to come under the anointing of the shepherd. And it says, my cup runneth over. That means we have more than enough oil. The Lord is pouring out his oil upon us so that it overflows, so that we have an abundance of miracles, so that we're walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what the oil is. We're walking in the power of healing. And our cup runneth over. We have more than enough for us and for others. There's going to be friendships. Uh, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. So they're going to pursue me. These friendships are the currency of heaven, the goodness of God in relationships, in the body of Christ, in the church, in a community of believers. Vulnerability, honesty. You know, all my women's meetings, we're all crying every meeting. Why? Because it's a safe place. Because it's a place where the Holy Spirit can come and where the flies has been embedded in your soul, he can take that right out of you. So you have freedom. So you can be delivered. So you can be healed. It's a beautiful place to receive the goodness of God in the land of the living. And this goodness and mercy is going to follow us this year. So believe for it. Grab a hold of it. It's that place where people can speak life into your soul. It's a place of humility in both giving and receiving. And we have to watch what comes out of our mouth because we want to speak life our speech is going to be grace-filled because we've received the love of the shepherd. That's why. If you don't receive enough of the love of the shepherd, then your speech isn't grace-filled. And so we have to get into that place to receive forgiveness, to receive enough love so that what spills out of us when we get bumped is the love of God. Okay, this is critically important. All the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This psalm encompasses everything I believe that the prophets are saying. I believe this psalm is just the psalm for the year 2023. So soak in it. Soak in it. Okay? All right. So what about Central Christian Church? Where are we, Central Christian Church? This past year... We, we've talked about changing the name of our church. And um, we've prayed about different names and different things and never really got solidified. 
But in September, October, the Lord just was brooding upon me, House of Glory. And I, I think the only one I shared it with was Kelsey, House of Glory. And so when um, David Yanez came in November and they were making a flyer, I told them, put Central Christian Church House of Glory as a tag. Okay? So I got that out there. And, and then after the fact, I told my husband about it. Um, it was just a little tag, House of Glory, you know, because I'm just like, that's what the Lord's giving me, okay? And uh, so recently, we had uh, Apostle Jeff Green come. Now, I, I believe things happen for a reason. Nothing's coincidence, okay? I believe God brought Apostle Jeff Green here at this time to give us the word that he wanted to give to our body. And I'm going to read you what this word is. And then after the service, I'm going to give you, so you'll get it, okay? You'll get the eight apostolic council things. I, I've typed it out for you. And you'll get Apostle Jeff Green's uh, prophetic word. But we had a couple ask us recently, well, what does House of Glory mean to you? And, you know, I've, I've thought about it, but maybe not in detail. And I, I really believe that we are going to... Um, God is going to be revealing to us what that means. God is going to be revealing what it means to become a house of glory, of his glory. Okay? And, uh, but I do know some things. And one is the glory realm is a truth realm. That means the word of God and his truth trumps whatever you got in your mind. Your own thoughts about you, other people, whatever. The glory realm is the truth realm. So it's the mind of Christ. We grab hold of the mind of Christ when we are in a glory, glory realm. And it's those that are heavenly minded. Okay, so the glory minded, uh, the heavenly minded come into the house of glory because it's his mind. And in the glory realm, we see what the Father is doing. When we see what the Father is doing, just like Jesus we do what the Father wants us to do. So that's part of the glory realm. And of course, we know we connect with the will of God. It's a realm of supernatural experiences. It's a realm of miracles. It's a realm of healing. It's a realm of deliverance. All of these things come in the glory realm. The word of God is good. The word of God is really good. But if the word of God is not balanced with practical expression of the manifestation of his presence, then we only have half, half of the pie. So we need both, both parts in the glory realm, the word, and we need the ascending and descending into heaven to bring heaven to earth and see it in the manifestation here on earth in the land of the living. So this is the word. It says, the Holy Spirit is hanging out here. He's fashioning this place into a house of glory. Now, of course, when he said that, I'm like, yes! A house of glory is not a place of methodology. Although we use methods, techniques, we pray the light bill, we pay the light bill, we sweep the floor, we have systems. But the dominant aspects of this church and the intention of the Lord is for the cloud of his presence to be in this place. Isn't that the thing that we desire the most, right? Every Sunday, the cloud of his presence fill the room. We want more of that. We want the cloud of his presence to be here always. He's really hungry to make this place where you're going to feel the cloud of glory. Not that he wants to be localized here because he wants to go out. In other words, beyond just the walls of the church. But as the people come together, as this assembly of people who are knit to one another, as they go deeper in relationship, he's going to be able to manifest himself very, very powerfully through them. And there will be some manifestations of his spirit that will be messy. Hmm. Doesn't take me by surprise. They may be out of order in terms of what the normal church would think. In fact, you may have a second generation of people who may be looking at this thing askance and thinking, wow, this is really different. This is what God is doing in revival throughout the world. 
So the Lord is just, you know, he just wants to break everybody's boxes and bubbles and he just keeps everybody on their toes and he doesn't do the same thing every time the same way and neither did Jesus, you know, and this is how the Lord works. And so we have to be really open and not try to judge what the Lord is doing in a negative way. Judge things unto life in a positive way. He's creating these places, these filling stations. Filling stations. That's that, that quiet brook that the Lord wants to take you to, to drink in the presence of the Lord with his shepherd. He's creating these places, these filling stations, a strong, uh, and I have a strong sense that this is what this place is to be, is a filling station. We have been on schedule. We have been doing what we've been doing. We've been nurturing the house, nurturing the body for this time. It's an appointed time. And it's not what, what am I going to do or how am I going to do this, but it's keep doing what you're doing, keep sowing, and the cloud of glory will rest here. All right? So, Cal, you can take that or Lexi, come on up. You can give everybody a copy of that. So he spoke that word over us. Um, we had dinner with him the night before Sunday morning, so all of you didn't get to hear that word. But he spoke that word over us then, and we've since transcribed it, and that's what the word I want to share with you because I believe it's right in step with where we're going and what God wants to do here. All right, so just some practical things uh, for this year. Um, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's what we're doing this year. We're, we're going to be growing in the manifestation of his presence. We want to um, give it all in worship because that's where the presence comes down. That's where we meet with him face to face. Uh, one of our, our main core value is loving God and loving one another. And we, as we heard in the prophetic, as we go deeper with one another, there's going to be more freedom. There's going to be more deliverance. There's going to be more care more experience in the shepherd. So we're doing some fun things. We've got the camping trip coming up on President's Weekend. So if you guys want to come join us, even just for the day, you can come on out and camp. And then we've got another family camp um, planned in March. And then, um, you know, our continuation of our men's meetings, our, our women's meetings, these are all places where um, we love one another and we have that expression of loving one another. Growth in vulnerability and the authenticity of real Christianity. Not this whole, I come to church as a fake Christian and I just put on my best. I'm like, no, that's not real Christianity. We're not at our best all the time. And we don't have to pretend. Because a real God wants to meet us in a real way. And he can and he does. And it's awesome. Okay? He can and he does, and it's awesome. So house of glory, God filling us with his glory so that we can be lights and shine. Um, we're definitely going to be doing more evangelism this year and outreach. Um, and, and we've got actually also in February, so we just secured another uh, couple from Rodney Howard Brown's church that's going to be here doing evangelism with us. So that'll be the second guest speaker in February. One of the things that God has put on my heart this year is to dive into the Jewish feasts. That would be the Jewish parties, the Jesus parties. Okay, everybody doesn't think of it like that, but let me tell you, Jesus is a partier. Okay, he loves parties. And so um, in March, Candice Smithman is going to be here, and she's going to be covering some of the feasts. And um, I'm listening to all these series right now, so I'm going to be you know, disclosing and sharing and teaching a little bit more on the feasts which I have in the past, but even more so in this upcoming year. And then, like I shared, we've got uh, Mark Liard, uh, Robert Liarden coming on being a reformer. And uh, 5783, for those of you that don't know, the eight is the pay in Hebrew culture. So the voice, the wind, the breath. So I'm also going to be doing a prophetic school in February uh, because we all know they all wanted us to shut the pay, the mouth, Right? God has us 5780. The next decade is going to be everything about your confessing and decreeing and declaring. And right after, boom, within three years of starting the new year, 5780, this is going back three years now, in 2020, boom. Nope, everybody has to wear a mask. So they tried to shut the church up. Well, 5783 is the pay, your mouth is eight, and the three is the trinity. 
that comes with power. It also means resurrection. Okay? So is this a year of miracles? You better believe it. Resurrection power to raise the dead. That's this year, 5783, Miracles, Wonders with the Trinity. So the Lord wants us to come into a unity and oneness with the Trinity. I shared that at my women's meeting. Uh, so freedom, deliverance, we'll be doing a lot more of that during the summertime. And then taking the mountain, HCCA education, that's our school here, uh, really becoming a greater influence in the realm of education and in the community. So um, there's a lot going on with that Tuesday night group as well. And so in a nutshell, that is the prophetic voices. That is uh, what God's saying over our church and how we're going to walk that out this year. The, the emphasis is that we're going to bring. How does that sound? Yeah? Yay, God. Yay, God. And he's going to need all of you doing your part, all of you working together to bring about God's plan and purpose in the earth today. So I'm going to just decree and declare a word over all of us, and we're going to call it good for today unless you need some prayer and want to come over. Father, I just thank you, Lord. I thank you for your word over this house, that we are indeed a house of glory in the making. And Lord, you want your glory to come and fill every single person in the room. So Lord, do it. Do it. I decree and declare that we will be filled with the glory of the Lord. With the glory of the Lord this year. And as a result, we will walk in miracles, signs, and wonders. Seeing your resurrection power, resurrecting the dead things, resurrecting the old things, resurrecting things that have been in the past and looked over and, and overlooked. You're going to bring things to life in us. You're going to bring new giftings to the table. People didn't even know what they had inside. You're going to be identifying giftings, and you're going to be growing them in this place of Goshen where there is life life abundantly green pastures lord you're going to be pouring out prosperity upon your people because we are in position and aligned with you so father i just decree and declare now the glory of the lord come in jesus name amen